that uh, you can make sense of. Uh, my co author is here, Garrett von Hunewald, who can unfortunately not be here today, as it is on Twitter. So we focus here on two parts of the task, two of the work packages as you were described. The first one is to compile an inventory. And I think inventory is, is not the right word, because inventory uh, lends itself to being very complete. I think in this case, things are not very complete, and I would rather call it the baseline. Uh, of European research infrastructures relevant to the implementation of continental African science and technology plans, and then compiling a similar thing for the African context, which was quite difficult to do. The important note here, when I speak today, is that it's not about the content. So if you know about something that's not on here, it may be in our report, in the preliminary work that we did, or it may not be uh, in our knowledge <coughs> space at the moment. And this is where the uh, conversation has to start. So this discussion is really about a framework, about a methodology that we use to get to what I'm going to show you. We've heard definitions of research infrastructures. We thought if we think of a joint environment, collaborative environment, how do we define it? And we borrowed very heavily on the um, on the SP context. And we heard this morning as well, in terms of the global context, what the definitions must be. What are they? They facilities, they resources, they services which are used by the scientific community for conducting cutting edge research for the generation exchange and preservation of knowledge. It includes associated human resources, major facilities, equipment or sets of instruments, collaborative networks, knowledge containing resources, such as collections, archives, data, and biobanks. So it's much more than just a set of equipment. It's really the whole, the word was used this morning, ecosystem around research that's supported by uh, a large infrastructure investment. Where are they? We saw that this morning. They can be single-sided, distributed, or national facilities. We heard from Professor Dion. But they can also be virtual. That means the service is being provided electronically. And it's, it's an access issue. You don't necessarily have to go to the facility uh, or the research infrastructure to use it. How do they connect? It includes cyber infrastructure. And cyber infrastructure is, is something that we will discuss a bit later this morning, and there's a whole discussion on that next week as well in the African Europe ICT context. So this cyber infrastructure then connects these facilities and people. Uh, it uh, provides structured information <coughs> systems, databases, and it includes data management enabling information and communication. So the data aspect is becoming more and more important in terms of how we define and look at the research infrastructure. What do they address? Physical sciences, engineering, life sciences, social sciences, humanities, the environment. In the past, we used to think very much about science and technology, science and engineering only. Uh, but all the other research environments are being addressed. And we heard that this morning as well. Why do we do it? It's now to actually look much broader uh, at the challenges that we have jointly in this world, global challenges, cross-border challenges. Uh, and the reason why nations are coming together to start planning research infrastructures because they cannot solve these problems on their own or that it cannot just be afforded uh, given the price of these things to do it on their own. Then we said, but if we look at what's in Africa, the pan-African context, how do you include something and exclude something? And we came up with this preliminary list of thinking about it. And we actually immediately threw it away afterwards because we realized that there are very, even in the developed context, very few research infrastructures that comply to all of these guidelines. Let us just look through it. They must enable scientific and technological cutting edge research and education. Uh, they must have a clear pan African added value, uh, which are linked to the facilities and they de develop them or deliver, sorry, top level services. They must be hosted by institutions awarding free and open access. Now, we heard this morning that no access is really free and that there are various schemes. Um, so we will have to revise this also in terms of the global context of thinking. Um, international competition on the basis of excellence is normally a good qualifier uh, in terms of if you want to do research, you have to put a proposal, there's a peer review, and people then say, okay, fine, uh, you can have time on whatever facility you have. In Africa, con uh, specifically look at the grand challenges, look at the millennia development goals, um, look at the African research area, although something like that has not been definitively uh, stated or defined. Uh, it must provide open access. We looked at the, 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 the 
access again, and uh, they must demonstrate continuous improvement of the underlying uh, e infrastructures and supporting the knowledge infrastructure. A practical breakdown, and this is something we did not in this context, but it is in the context of the debate about uh, knowledge infrastructure as such in South Africa, is if you look at research infrastructures, it's your facilities and equipment, including things like I've listed here. I'm not necessarily going to read through everything. Repositories of knowledge, and here your libraries, archives, data repositories, natural science collections become very important. The wire banks are included there. And your cyber infrastructure, which has to do with data processing, data management, data storage, decision support tools, national research and education networks. And um, Colin Wright and uh, Duncan Martin are here, and they will talk later about these things. I'm not going into that detail. Or beach in the South African context, these things are developing at national level and they are linking at continental level. So with this as a definition and a base of understanding what we're talking about, we said how do we now bring, from the perspective of putting an industry together, how do we bring together what is in Europe and what is in Africa? Because this is what Peirut is about, is promoting those partnerships. We took the SV projects programs or focus